Welcome back to Small Arms Firearms, where our mag capacity is the same as how many push-ups I can do. Today on Small Arms Firearms, we go over some of the more high-end, high-quality, top-tier pistols that you could get. We were lucky enough to have a few friends at the range that have a collection of pistols that are phenomenal. Whether they use them for competition, where they collect them, they just enjoy and are an avid shooter. We were able to test a lot of these guns side-by-side -side on high-speed footage, and we're going to show all that here in a minute. I want to say that this is more of like a first impressions kind of video. I simply didn't have the time nor the ammo for all of us to be able to run a hundred rounds through each pistol to get a true kind of review sense of how this gun shoots. Some of them I own, some of them my friend owns, so we're not necessarily biased on them, but we've just had a lot more practice on them. Whereas on mine, I've had thousands of rounds through them. So yes, I'm going to be faster on the trigger. I know how it shoots. The ergonomics fit me. That's why I bought the damn thing. I'm gonna go kind of quick through these. I'm trying to show as much of the high-speed footage as I can. We got a lot of high-speed footage. We have five shooters going through all of these pistols and I wanna get this information to you as quick as possible without making the video last an hour. Um, so if you have any questions, put them down in the comments. Again, this is not a full review of any of these pistols as I have not had enough time with them to really give one of those. Along with my other videos, this is not sponsored. All of these firearms were bought by each of us. We didn't get any discounts that so we're not paid to promote them. These are our true unbiased opinions on them. As we've done with some of the other EDC videos, all of these pistols will be using the same 115 grain ball full metal jacket ammo all loaded to about 125 power factor. We're all going to be shooting at an A zone target at seven yards out, simulating a build drill kind of. This way we can make sure that we're not just putting one shot down range and coming back to zero. We are trying to put four to five to six shots as fast as we can and they all have to stay within the A zone at seven yards. The high speed can only pick up about two seconds of footage, so we're just trying to get as much as we can in the high speed. Now, is it really worth it to buy these super expensive pistols? We're talking over $6,000 for some of these. Which one's the best out of them? But better yet, which one's the best price for performance? We're gonna start it off with the Laugo, Lago. I, I honestly have no idea how to say that. Laugo, Lugo, whatever it is. It's called the Alien. A lot of you know what the Alien is. You may have seen it in other videos. It's a super expensive, high-end, competition-ish pistol. The big selling part on this, as you've seen with like the H9, is they're trying to get as low a bore axis as possible. They do that with a fixed barrel and it has a gas piston delayed blowback system. It's completely unique. There's nothing else out there that I am aware of that you can even buy. It also has a very low slide mass, so less moving energy maybe back into you, less muzzle flip. We'll have to look at the high speed to really get an idea and compare it to the other guns. It's unique also in the fact that it has more of a Glock grip angle. Now, recently they've also put out a new version of the Alien that has more of a traditional 1911 style grip angle. So for people like me that never have shot Glocks at all really, the 1911 grip angle makes a lot more sense for me. And I think with them doing that, that opened up maybe their market value for shooters that want to buy this for potentially competition. I will say, you can see in the high speed and you from other shooters taking a chance at it, it does have less muzzle rise, especially for a pistol that's not ported or has a compensator on it. It does still feel like all that recoil is coming straight back at you. So it doesn't feel like the pistol's softer than other guns. They, having a super heavy pistol, shooting that like the Bull Armory or a CZ, it feels softer shooting those because that 
energy is getting absorbed a little more into the pistol than coming straight back at you. Now I'm posting an image up here showing you kind of the price range and the models they offer. $3,900 I think is what they start out at and they go all the way up to $7,000 for like a collector's limited edition run of some kind with a bunch of extra stuff. I will give Alien this. When you buy their kits, you get a lot with them. Um, they do take care of their customers and from what I can see, I haven't met somebody that owns one and did not thoroughly enjoy it. With that being said though, I have a little bit of issues with the trigger. I don't know if that's just the design of it. The safety doesn't part doesn't bother me much. It has like the Glock style little trigger safety dingus on it. Not a big deal. But for the price of this, the trigger is not perfect. It's still a good trigger, but it's just would take a lot of training and just shooting the gun a lot. It would take a lot of practice with it for me to really master the trigger and to really feel comfortable with it. Good to go. Wasn't sure about the trigger. I wish it was a little bit lighter. Um, and I don't know other how to describe it. It was still fairly crisp. The reset wasn't bad. But my Shadow 2 with the Cajun Gunworks trigger is better. It's noticeably better and way cheaper. So because of that, it's hard for me to say on an initial impressions video like this that I could ever recommend the Alien for its price point. It is fun to shoot. It is a head turner, super unique, and I love all of those aspects of it. Would I buy the gun with my budget? Probably not. But there are some of you out there that do like to collect either unique or high-end firearms and pistols that are fun to shoot, and this hits all those boxes. I mean, you can't take this out to the range and not have everyone look at what, what's he got over there. It's, it's just cool gun, it's fun to shoot. If that's something that maybe you're thinking about getting, try and hold one if you can. I, I still think it's a great purchase if you have the money for it just because of how fun and cool it is. As far as competition, I can't see myself ever using this in like limited optics or carry optics probably ever. Well, can't use it in carry optics, it's a single action only. The next pistol on the list is the Oracle Arms 2311. These kind of debuted, at least from what I saw at SHOT Show 2023. And they started shipping, I believe, in the end of 2023 and they started getting into people's hands around then. This is an interesting one as it kind of is like the idea of the Plat Stealth Arms Platypus where it's a double stack 1911, but instead of using like your normal dub double stack 1911 mags, it uses SIG P320 mags, which are fairly cheap, readily available, and some of you already have a ton of them. I'll give Oracle Arms a huge amount of credit on this. When you buy the package, you get a nice uh, gun bag, you get three mags with it, you get all the optics plates. You don't just say, I want an RMR optic plate. You get all of them to fit basically every major manufacturer of red dots that you could find. The model we tested today was the 2311 Compact. And the prices on their models, as you see on the screen, range from $1,900 to $2,400. Still not cheap, but we're also not terrible. It shoots really smooth for me, and it comes back to zero very quickly. I do love how this pistol shoots, but there's one complaint I have about this, and it feels, for me, it's pretty big. It might sound like it's not, but the grip on this thing is huge. I have fairly long hands, fingers, whatever. My hands aren't like necessarily fat and big, but my fingers are long. With that being said, I usually, on anything I shoot, have palm swell grips. My Atlas, my CZ, um, I, that's just, that helps me get a better grip, better purchase, and I can control the gun better. With this one, it feels huge. It gives me plenty of real estate to grab onto the pistol, but the stippling or texture on the grip really isn't anything to write home about, and it just feels like I can't control it as well because of that. If maybe it had some really aggressive stippling and texturing like my lock grips do on the CZ, maybe I'd have a totally different thoughts about it and I wouldn't be complaining about it. But it feels huge in the hands and I'm just kind of blown away by that. With that being said, maybe the full size grip, not the compact, is it, does it feel as chunky? Don't know. I haven't ever had a chance to hold one. And since this is a compact, it's supposed to be something you're 
carrying and concealing potentially and I with my small build and skinniness I don't think that would ever be possible without wearing like a decent sweatshirt or a jacket over it. I like what they're doing as a company. It's innovative. They're moving even more models now and they're coming out with new options on their pistols and so I'm really excited to see what they come up with in the future and I would love to get a chance with a full-size version of this and put like 500 to 1,000 rounds down and see what kind of drills and times I can get on stages because I think there's potential in this pistol, especially since it takes such a common magazine. I mean, when they call it Stealth Arms Platypus, he has this thing stealthed out. And hey, that's beautiful. Gotta hand it to the guys if I could get it to focus. Now, this is a fun one, the Stealth Arms Platypus. They've been around for a couple years now, I believe. Um, the great part about them is the, is the price to getting in. $1,400, I believe, is what they start at, and they go up to $1,900, depending on how you customize them. And you can customize them a lot. Their website is so much fun. I have spent probably a solid hour just customizing different versions of their 2011 just because it's fun. Not only that, as I've said before, these take Glock 17 mags, huge. My Atlas, for me to get a mag for those that I like, that I want to use for competition, you're at $100. Easy. Easy. And now these are Glock 17 mags inside of 2011 and that you can get everywhere. You could probably find them out on the street right now. I have actually had a chance to shoot the Platypus multiple times now and a couple different versions of them are just different customizations from two different customers. Um, they shoot great. For the price, you cannot beat this thing. It's a sleeper. Now, is the trigger pull as good as some of the other 2011s here? No. Is it bad? Is it a deal breaker? Absolutely not. You have three options from the factory when you're ordering this trigger. More like a duty weight, which is gonna be your four, around a little over four pounds. You're also gonna have a three to three and a half pound option. And then you have their competition version, which is two and a half to three pounds. Trigger feels good. It feels crisp. Uh, there's not a whole lot of take up on it. It breaks clean and it resets clean and quickly. I understand that there's a huge following with the Springfield Prodigy. With the Platypus being available, I don't know why. It is more expensive, but not a lot more expensive. I think the maybe the reason people aren't getting the Platypus is either they don't know about it or it's the wait time. So when you do your customization, obviously it takes time for them to produce those. And I think the wait times are slowly going up because they're getting even more popular. On one of the models I tried, and this is so far my only complaint with them, the safety lever on the right hand side of it, well, the main safety lever for a right handed person. So the left side of the gun, this safety lever where I put my right hand. When I would shoot it, it was digging and cutting like into my skin on my hand and it was painful. I didn't even realize it at first, but after like three or four shots, it didn't take long that I was really uncomfortable. No matter how I adjusted my grip, it was still cutting into my skin and I was basically bleeding by the end of the shooting experience. The other one I tried, I didn't have that issue. And I don't really know what the difference was. Both safety levers looked the same. The only difference was that on the front of the grip for the one that cut me had like finger grooves here on the grip, whereas the one, the second one I tried was flat like this Atlas is. I don't know how that would make the difference, but the second uh, platypus I tried was much more comfortable. And everyone that shot it kind of had the same response. Wow, that shot really well. How, how much was it? it there, I, I just don't get it where I've seen so many issues with the Prodigy over the last year, which they're getting better at fixing, but why deal with that? Why buy something that you're gonna have to upgrade out of the box to get it to where you want it? When these things are shipped to your door, basically, or, and you pick it up and it's how you want it, and it works, and it shoots, and it's fun. That's the one that fights above its weight. For the, for the price, that's just an amazing gun. No one's gonna beat this for the price anytime soon. Yeah. Although you're the bull armory that, it's not that much more, because these are two, uh, that's like 17, oh, okay. 27, so. Next on our list is the CZ Shadow 2. If you've ever done competitive shooting and you've ever shot carry optics, you've probably seen someone using one of these. 
They are phenomenal. They shoot great, they shoot fast, they're heavy, and they work. This thing's reliable. This was my first high-end pistol I ever bought. I waited a long time. I had just been shooting an M&P 2.0 for a while, just starting into the competition kind of world, and every day, just looking for used pistols, looking around, seeing if there's anything local or on your major websites that you can probably get a used pistol at. That's really nice. You went faster for sure. Well, and they're pretty much right on. It came back to zero just instantly. Really nice. That's why it's hard, man. After I bought this and then I tried this again, I was like, man, there's a difference. I do shoot this faster, uh -huh. for sure. But for the price of what I paid for this compared to that, yeah, it's really hard <laughs> not to like that more almost. Yeah, yeah, it shoots really beautifully. It's, it's really interesting to be able to do this comparison. With $20,000 <laughs> more than that of pistols out here. I ended up finding this thing used for a pretty killer deal. The slide was milled and it's not optics plates on this. So that's nice because I don't really like using plates for an RMR cut optic. It had a trigger job and all internals replaced by Cajun Gunworks. This thing shoots phenomenally. I just got really lucky on finding this with all those mags ready to go. I just added my own grips to it that I prefer. There's lots of aftermarket parts available for it. I even put a nice little thumb ledge on it to where that helps with a little bit more control for me. I prefer to shoot like that. It is actually a thumb rest slide stop, so it's legal in carry optics. And this is the pistol I've been using in carry optics now all year. I love it. It works phenomenal. If we're simply talking price for performance, no one beats this. It shoots great. It runs all day long. I barely have to clean it compared to like a 2011. And I just, I, you can't beat it. If you're looking to up your pistol game into competitive shooting, or you just enjoy having a flat shooting, really accurate pistol that is fun to shoot, look for these used if, if that's an option for you. Usually they run around $1,000. I think brand new, I saw them on Palmetto State Armory's website for about $1,200. So one of the best things about this, being from the Cajun Gunworks package, all the internals have been completely changed out. Um, the trigger's phenomenal, especially in single action. In double action, they really smoothed it out and lightened it. So this is the take up, just that little bit of mount. And then that's the break. Now I'm pulling this with my left finger, so it's a little odd, but you think you get the idea. And this is the reset. And then break again. I, I don't have a trigger gauge to tell you the actual weight of this. It can't be more than two pounds in single action. And double action is great too. It's really smooth, but it's still gonna be like your six, pound seven pound I'm not really sure like I said but this looks dumb pulling with my left finger but it works great especially for that first shot on a stage can't say enough good things about the CZ Shadow 2 and I wholeheartedly recommend it for anyone that doesn't have it in their arsenal already another 2011 on our list is Bull Armory's SAS 2 Air here's that Bull Armory You didn't bring the compact, did you? No. I feel. That was, was nice. Yes. Talking to someone. <laughs> I probably got to like, like, Sorry. <laughs> no, Hello. no. It's 2,700. How many, how many? Steve was nice enough to let us shoot this one as well. Another 1911 double stack pistol. This one shoots like a dream. The price on this one is 2,650 if you can find it. Bull Armory doesn't do it like Atlas does or Stealth Arms or any of the other kind of major manufacturers. They just start making them and then when they become available, they list them on their website or they sell them to dealers and you just got to find it. This is also where we're getting into like the top tier of performance and craftsmanship when it comes to a pistol. It's smooth, it's heavy, the trigger's great, 
and it looks really cool. The fit and the finish and the craftsmanship that went into the bull armory is on par with my Atlas. Um, the slide is smooth. It feels like it's running on wheels. It, it's everything about this feels professional quality and you just tell that when you put it in your hand. The trigger on this one is also phenomenal. I would say compared to the Atlas, it's really close. It's hard to tell the difference. Uh, the Atlas just seems to be a little bit tighter. I don't know if that makes sense. Not as in like the trigger's harder to pull, but just there's maybe not as much play in it and it's very minimal if that. I, I cannot say how much I love this gun anymore. I, if, I mean, it's, it's great, especially for the price. If you were in between the bull versus like the alien or the platypus or the oracle arms 2311 the bull beats them all easily in my opinion with especially with the ergonomics the trigger and just how well it shoots and you'll see here steve describing that out of all of his guns the tens of thousands of dollars in pistols he has he shoots this one the best one of these days i hope to get that bull armory side by side to the atlas and really do like a good two, 300 range, round range day with each one and just run them through their tests and run drills and see what kind of times I'm getting on the drills and to see if there really is any difference in the performance on these, especially I'm not at like a grandmaster shooter. So these guns will outrun me and I bet I could have saved a ton of money going with Bull Armory. Our last gun on the list, the Atlas Athena. This one, currently, on their website, is $5,900. They raised the prices a couple times in the last year. Um, I was lucky enough to get this before they did that and kind of got a, a better deal at a, a gun shop on the East Coast. You get what you pay for, right? Well, yes and no. This thing is a brick. It feels great in the hands the ergonomics the grip is just perfect the customization you can do with the grip where i have a step panel over here for my support hand and then i have the palm swell for my strong hand grip maybe one of my complaints is because you're paying so much for this you get a soft gun bag and like one or two mags i think one mag maybe two i think and that's it uh, you still have to pay extra for an optic plate and things like that. I, I mean, I had to pay extra for the panels on the grips. You just hope that when you're paying on this tier, you're getting a little bit more of those extras, but you don't. But what you do get is basically perfection. That's more than I paid for my car. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I, mean, I believe you. <laughs> I like that gun. The trigger on this thing is a joke. It's so good. So. I guess I'm going to do it with my left hand. So this is the take up on the trigger. That's it. And we're at the wall. I don't know if you can even see that move on camera. And then this is the reset. And then the brake, it's insane. When I ordered it, it's the sub one and a half pound competition trigger. I don't have a gauge again to see what it actually is at. I've never felt anything as good as this. It is just, it's beautiful. Another thing is just the finish and the quality on this. I mean, the slide, it just feels like it's on glass. I don't know how they did it. I really don't. It just moves. It, I mean, I haven't even oiled this thing in probably a month and you can just feel it's perfect. It's amazing how well everything is manufactured and the tolerances on this thing. It's unbelievable. Now I know I said in the bowl that, hey, it's like half the price of the Atlas and it shoots just as good. I, you'll see in the high speed. The action on this seems to move quicker where as soon as you pull the trigger, it's chambered another round faster. Let me preface this with not faster than you would ever notice, 
especially we're talking thousands of a second, maybe hundreds of a second, and you're not going to improve your split times by that. But what it can do is it you'll notice this perfect zero barrel system that they have really does come back to zero quicker than anything else that I've shot, especially anything without a compensator or porting. Now with this, I have a lot of rounds through it. So I've done a lot of different testing and just fun shooting it. I shot it all last year for limited optics. Um, this thing's also really accurate. Out at 50 yards, you're ringing steel all day long, no problem. And the last thing I have to say about it is the looks. Me personally, super subjective. I think it looks badass. Maybe it's because I spent a ton of money on it and maybe it's because I just absolutely love it. But it's also one of those heirloom purchases I have that will stay in my family, hopefully, as long as my kids want it. The gun's twice as expensive as a Bull Armory. Is it twice as good? No, it's not. It, it's not near twice as good. Is it better? In my hands, yes. I haven't had enough time with the Bull Armory. If I ran them side by side for a few days, I'd probably change my mind on that and say they're equal. But at this point, something that's not gonna change is the fit in my hands. And the fit in my hands is absolutely better with the Atlas. The stippling on their grips is better. Um, and I feel like the end finish and the craftsmanship is a little higher on the Atlas. All right, so what do we think? Out of all of them, the Atlas is the winner as far as the top tier high-end gun. My opinion, I've shot some of these a lot, some of them I haven't. It just works better. Everything about it seems like it was built to a higher standard than anyone else is really doing. These really are made for competition though. Um, the engineering they put into this, everything is made to be fast and to get you back on zero and to run competition stages. Now Atlas does make a few EDC models. It just blows my mind that someone's going to spend five to $7,000 on an everyday carrier pistol where if you actually have to use it, then that pistol goes bye-bye and you might never get it back. But maybe if I had a few million in the bank, I wouldn't care. I'd be carrying two of them. Here's the kicker. If I had had an opportunity to try that Bull Armory before I ever tried the Atlas, I probably wouldn't have bought the Atlas. Um, it probably would have came down to availability. If I couldn't get a Bull Armory, then maybe I would have broke down and bought the Atlas. But I could have saved myself a ton of money going with Bull Armory and not getting the Atlas. I don't want a dog on the Atlas because it is my favorite gun I've ever shot in my life. I love it. I, I am, don't regret the purchase at all. And I can only make me a better shooter over time because the pistol's always gonna run and it's only gonna be me that's the limiting factor. Best performance per dollar, I think I've already said it, CZ Shadow 2. This gun's literally, what I paid for it, five times cheaper, over five times cheaper than my Atlas. It can keep up all day long with my Atlas. Now, do I run stages and drills faster with the Atlas? Yes, I do. Do I like my Atlas better? Yes, I do. But the CZ is so good that it's still not going to hinder me in how fast I do a stage. I, it's still always going to run faster than I can pull the trigger. It's solid, it's durable, reliable, it's heavy, it works. The Shadow 2 has kind of become my baseline for how I compare any other high-end or competition guns. Does this work better than the Shadow 2? No, move on. Yes, how expensive is it? it? I really cannot recommend this pistol enough. Now, as far as the other pistols, like the Platypus, the price point and performance are right there. They're spot on, they work great. I don't think it's something I would ever use in necessarily competition, but it's such a great gun for the price. You can't beat that. The 2311 from Oracle Arms, again, shot smooth. I enjoyed it. The trigger was good. Um, return to zero was great. The grip is too big. In, unless they can get that grip down or at least offer different options, I can't ever see myself purchasing one of these. Uh, if you have really huge hands, it might be the absolute sweet spot. Now the Alien, it's unique, it's really cool, it's fun to shoot, but at this price point, I think it's nuts to own it for anything other than collecting it. And now I don't want to say that the low bore axis and the gas piston, whatever their action is on that thing, is a gimmick. I don't want to say that because it does flip less and it's not ported or compensated. But that recoil still has to go somewhere. It still comes right back at you. And the trigger is just 
confusing. It, it It's unique in the fact that, and you'll see on the footage before that everyone kind of stuttered with the trigger. So fun to shoot. It's a head turner at the range. It's a cool gun. I would steer away from it unless you just want to collect it. Bull Armory. They have opened my eyes to their products and they will be on my radar from now on. If I ever decide to start shooting an open class, they will be the ones I probably look to for an open class gun. I've already checked some of them out and I can't wait to maybe get my hands and try one. But until I had to go to open class, I think I'm gonna stick with my current collection. Thank you guys for stopping by. You're all the best. I hope to see you in our next video. We're out. I don't look like Rob. Comes to zero. Oh my god. No, not. Sorry. A lot of slow. Wow, man. From the top. That shoot really well. You're gonna see in the high speed shooting.